Okay, so we made it to Friday. Welcome to the 954sports.com YouTube station. It is a TGIF. I'm Matt Levine. I hope you've had a great week. You're anticipating the start of the weekend. Hallelujah. And if you have a chance, like yours truly, to get the next few days for some R and R, much needed. Take what you can in today's world. Speaking of today's world, right? The sports world in particular. I've got a question. I've got no answer, but I've got a question. The bench coach for the Oakland Athletics, the Oakland A's, Ryan Christensen, why wasn't he suspended? Why wasn't he reprimanded? Allows to allowed to be able to continue coaching despite this. Last week, in the A's 6-4 win over the Texas Rangers, that's how he celebrated afterward, going all Heil Hitler on everyone. Throwing out the Hitler's salute. Of course, with COVID-19 and social distancing, fist bumps, High five, bro hugs, out. The elbow bump and the Nazi salute, at least according to one member of a major league squad in this bench coach, is the thing to do. Take a look at it again, I'm sure. I'll show it. He did it twice. Why did he do it? Because he wasn't thinking. Maybe he's an anti-Semite. Maybe he's stupid. I'd say all the above. Anti-Semitism, somewhat in vogue of late. Not that it's gone out of style. But in the world of sports, it has been put on the forefront. Deshaun Jackson sparking things up. A little over a month ago, the much maligned NFL All-Pro receiver, Back as a member of the Philadelphia uh, Eagles. Quoted some fake Hitler quotes in support of anti-Semitism. Of course, he did the mea culpa thing. Not good enough to me. Once you start spouting rhetoric based around Adolf Hitler, the Nazis, or a salute, you rightfully deserve to earn the moniker of anti-Semite, like Ryan Christensen has now done for the Oakland A's. 46 years old. What was he doing? I have no idea. What was his MO? I have no idea. Again, not much thinking or thought went into that one. Some would call it the post-game karate chop. I simply call it the Hitler salute, Heil Hitler. Not too far off the mark from the original Nazi leader to the left and the A's bench coach in that picture to the right. Now Christensen uh, had given his mea culpa and his apology I'll tell you what he said. Forty-six year old Christensen who played six years in the majors from ninety-eight to two thousand and three. Spent about five years in the minor leagues before becoming the A's bench coach in two thousand and eighteen. He said, I made a mistake. I will not deny it. Today in the dugout, I greeted players with a gesture that was offensive in the world today of COVID. I adopted our elbow bump, which we do after wins to create some distance with the players, my gesture unintentionally, unintentionally, operative word, resulted in a racist and horrible salute I do not believe in. What I did is unacceptable, and I deeply apologize. The A's organization called the gesture offensive. His manager, his boss, the manager, Bob Melvin, and the players came to his defense. So basically, the way I read it, if you want to paraphrase, 
I didn't mean anything by it, you know. We're social distancing now, throwing fist bumps. Not allowed. So since we're doing the elbow bump thing, I threw in a little twist with the old Nazi salute. Ha ha ha. Not funny. Being sarcastic, of course. Major League Baseball, what do they do? Absolutely nothing. What do the Oakland A's do? Absolutely nothing. Not even a slap on the wrist. Hmm. And a simple apology and you move on. The world we live in. Unbelievable, isn't it? Just to consider the fact of the hypocrisy of Major League Baseball going all political. Yeah, they've done it. The game has gone political. Extra, extra, read all about it. You go all in with Black Lives Matter. Major League Baseball. Support racial equality, right? Justice for all. And old Christensen here throws out the old Nazi salute just for some What a world we live in. Filled with what I'd say are double standards and again, hypocrisy. I'm not the only one who feels that way. This here is Cody Decker. If you've never heard of him, he's a Jewish baseball player and he's essentially the real life Crash Davis. When he retired last year, for the Reno Aces, and what a cool way he went out last July. His last home run, he had had 206 home runs. He was the active minor league career leader in home runs. Really was. Crash Davis. And what a great movie. 1988 Bull Durham. Hard to believe it was that long ago. But nonetheless, Decker... His last hit in the big in the minor leagues, I should say, in organized baseball was a walk-off home run for the Aces, and then he retired. Went out with a bang. He played eight games in the major leagues. More than a thousand in the minor leagues. Never got a hit in the major leagues. Bit of a moonlight gram. Another great movie in Field of Dreams. Throwing the heat. This Friday, maybe more like the knuckleball or an his pitch. But he played eight games in the big leagues, just the one RBI. An accomplished minor league career. And as a Jewish baseball player, he talked about, here he is playing for Team Israel, which I'll get into in just a moment. Talk about Team Israel as well and his... Uh, ability to help raise that team to new plateaus. But he played at minor league baseball stadiums all over America and said, quote, anti-Semitism is rampant in major league baseball. Decker recalled several incidents in a story with TMZ, which is worth checking out. I'll just give you some of the cliff notes here, some of the quotes he said that during a minor league game against the Frisco Rough Riders in Texas, several members of the opposing team called him and fellow Jewish teammate Nate Freeman, kikes. He was also fired for a team the day after being called into the coach's office to explain his Judaism to the coach, the manager, and he was fired because the coach was a born-again Christian. And he goes on to talk about the role that anti-Semitism unfortunately plays in sports. First time I was called a kike, then I remember second grade. Also, about five minutes after that happened, I won my first ever fight. Hey, yo, Adrian. Let's move on. Decker was also quoted and in misbelief at the fact that Coach Christensen, the A's, Major League Baseball, 
completely went without punishing him. Here's part of his quote on there being no repercussions, no punishment, nothing doled out. As he says, actions have consequences. That's not cancel culture, that's life. You're damn right, Cody Decker, well said. Decker. also had this to say about Major League Baseball. As Decker took issues with the A's response for saying it looked like a Nazi salute. No, he did the Nazi salute. He did a Nazi salute twice. Let's not sugarcoat around it. I really, really despise their response. I hate every half-measure response Major League Baseball always makes. Again, well said, Cody Decker. That makes two of us. The half-assed measures by Major League Baseball when it comes to anti-Semitism, not good enough. How about throwing as, as much TLC as you do with political causes like that of Black Lives Matter into fighting anti-Semitism? It does not belong in sports. It does not belong in Major League Baseball. It does not belong anywhere, period. End of story. As for Israeli baseball, I love the hat. Been meaning to get one of those for a couple of years. The Israeli baseball team came into some prominence, competing in the 2013 World Baseball Classic. They would lose in the first round. Did well in 2017's World Baseball Classic with a landmark win that put him on the map against Cuba. That launched him into a nice run. They were ranked 41st going into the 2017 BC. After that 2007 World Baseball Classic, they wound up winning their Euro, European Pool B, going 6-0. Then the Euro Championships, uh, they did well in. They won the African American, I'm sorry, the African European Tournament. They finished fourth overall. And being rated in the European and African ranks. And that allowed them to compete for a spot in the Olympics, which they were able to secure as they won in the qualifying competitions in Europe and Africa, and they became one of six teams to qualify for the 2020 Olympics. There you see them pictured for an exhibition game in Brooklyn, New York at Coney Island's Cyclone Field. What a great place to go check out baseball. When New York and baseball and the world returns to somewhat of normalcy, which I'm hoping is sooner than later, my suggestion, go down to check out a Cyclones game and get yourself some Nathans. It is a beautiful place. You get the backdrop of Coney Island, Brooklyn, and then you get this beautiful, beautiful, pristine ballpark looking out over the Atlantic Ocean. It really is a terrific, terrific place. You know, Brooklyn's about four hours south of Cooperstown, New York. And I'm going to talk about Cooperstown and Sandy Koufax in just a second. But I want to show you this. There have been some great Jewish baseballs in Major League baseball players who have hit baseballs, pitch baseballs, fielded baseballs in Major League Baseball history. This right here is a painting done. You can find it at jewishballplayers.com. Terrific, terrific artwork. In this picture here, they do several uh, different instances of this piece of art. In fact, if you look at the top, you see the players in the bottom of the picture. If you look at the top, they can even insert you into the crowd. In this rendition, you have some celebrities 
inserted into the crowd like Rob Reiner, Larry King. This is Larry King for Welch's Grape Juice. That's my Larry King. I got to practice. I got to warm up for that. I can do a better Larry King. I promise you. Maybe not. Larry King, he has his autograph in there. Rob Reiner has his autograph in there. Commissioner Bud Selig. And then amongst the players in that particular picture, Ian Kinsler. He has a picture signed. Al Rosen. Sandy Koufax, just to name a few. So again, they have all different renditions and artwork that you can select. JewishBallplayers.com. It ain't cheap, I'll tell you that, but it looks quality, and it's pretty cool. The different choices and selections they have worth checking out. I figured I'd give them a plug if I'm going to put up that beautiful picture. Now let's talk about Sandy Koufax to wrap it up. Sandy Koufax, perhaps arguably the greatest Jewish athlete ever. Arguably the greatest left-handed pitcher in Major League Baseball history. Jewish or not, the lefty. An amazing, amazing career highlighted in a short period of time by just outstanding accomplishments. Here are some of them. As I mentioned, Brooklyn, about four hours south of Cooperstown. That's where that placard lies. Cooperstown is another magnificent place to visit. You're going to do a summer road trip to Brooklyn. Might as well head up to upstate New York. Go check out Cooperstown. Spend the day. Do what I did. Look at every single thing. Read every single inscription. Take it all in. Beautiful town. Beautiful Hall of Fame. Beautiful museum. Thumbs up. Sandy Koufax. Brooklyn Dodgers. Came up in 55. Pitched with Brooklyn through 57. Won a world championship going 2-2 two two as a 19-year-old on that legendary 55 Brooklyn Dodgers team. How about them bums? Went to L.A. with the Dodgers from 58 to, 50, to uh, 66. Set all-time records with four no-hitters in four years. Capped by a 1965 perfect game. And by capturing earned run titles five seasons in a row, 62 through 66, he won 25 or more games three times. Had 11 shutouts in 63. Strikeout leader four times with a record 382 Ks in 65. Fanned 18 in the game twice. MVP, 63. Cy Young Award winner, 63, 65, 66. His last season in 66 had to retire because of arthritis and a condition in the left arm, his pitching arm, that would have left and rendered his hand on the left side, his arm, useless if he continued pitching. That's what the doctor said. No Tommy John surgeries, no fancy surgeries back then. It was either gut it out and pitch through the pain and maybe live with consequences afterwards. So he departed the sport. As I mentioned, some of the accolades there. But that last season, how good was he? 30 years old, 27-5, and 1.73 on the ERA, 317 Ks. 2,396 Ks for his career. Out of the 165 wins against the 87 losses, 40 shutouts. Amazing. As Tina Turner would say, simply the best, better than all of the rest. Sandy Koufax. He's one of those athletes that I say, I wish I would have been alive to see. Anyway, the original point of my video on this Friday is simple. This crap doesn't belong in baseball. No siree. Coach Christensen, you made your apology, but you'll always be labeled with the suspicion of being an anti-Semite for the rest of your days because of a stupid act that just doesn't belong in the and it just doesn't belong in our world. Would have been nice for Major League Baseball 
to at least hand out a suspension, maybe showed they care a little bit about putting some consequences to a anti-Semitic act.